Did you know that the world's largest maritime vessel, when fully loaded, weighs approximately 600,000 tons? It's also 243 feet wide and over 1,600 feet long. That's 150 feet longer than the Empire State Building is high. On average, though, those vessels carry around 25,000 tons of cargo, carrying anything from Barbie dolls, made in China t-shirts, to gold, liquefied gas, and other wonders we all need in our everyday life. The vessels themselves can cost anywhere between 50 to 150 million dollars. And then they cost another few millions per year to maintain. They travel the world sometimes for seven months without getting on shore. As a result, it's actually been told that some of those vessels are even carrying diseases long gone on land. I'm actually thinking tuberculosis, cholera, this kind of diseases. And yet, that very last rumor is actually not the story that scares me the most. Can you imagine that those multi-million dollars, multi-tons steel monsters are sometimes stuck in port for weeks, if not months, because of a $1 worth plastic part? It is that very horror story I get to work on every day. And as you can tell, I love it. One of those days, as we were visiting such a vessel, we came across a very interesting and yet very, very common situation in this maritime industry. See, those huge vessels have very simple communication backup system. In case of a massive power outrage, the crew still needs to be able to communicate with one another from one end to the other on the vessel. And so they have crank phones that they have to manually activate for the entire time of that emergency phone call. So unfortunately for that vessel we were visiting, fortunately for us, well, it was actually stuck in port because one of those phones was broken. And because it is a critical equipment for the safety of the crew, the vessel was simply not allowed to leave the port until the phone was fixed. As we looked a little bit closer at what the actual issue was with the scrank phone, we realized it was a simple piece of plastic. You know, a little plastic gear in the crank mechanism, that was the part that was broken. In the best case scenario, when the crew is able to narrow down the misfunction of the equipment down to the level of that one part, well, it's a great start, but they still have to wait in port for a few weeks. Let's take a real case example to understand why. Let's say my vessel broke down close to the port of Singapore, but the, the part, the inventory for that part, it's kept in Amsterdam. You really only need one unit of that part, but you cannot order it in less than a bulk of 50. And it takes an average of 18 days to go from Amsterdam to Singapore using traditional shipping which is also maritime shipping, by the way, so it takes another vessel to get there. You could get the parts in three days if you expedite them by air travel, but then it would cost you $129 in shipping. This is the best case scenario for $1 worth part. In most cases, however, that piece of plastic is actually part of a much more complex and much more expensive piece of equipment and the crew is simply not allowed to replace and even less order that part by themselves. Otherwise, they might lose all the guarantees that are coming with the equipment. So what does that mean? Well, pretty much waiting in port again, but this time it can take more than weeks. It can take months. And also this time, the crew is waiting for full equipment to be replaced. And that can be actually very expensive. $20,000 expensive in the case of my crank phone. Also, did I mention that the cost for such vessel to be waiting in port is over $10,000 a day? So that horror story is not specific to maritime or shipping, of course, and most industries have variation of it. 
The consequences are usually the same, though. Tons of waste, unnecessary expenses, and a very inefficient supply chain. We could leave it to this conclusion and just, you know, not do anything about it. But the stakes are actually pretty high for maritime shipping specifically. See, almost 90% of everything we're consuming goes through maritime shipping at some point. Without it, we wouldn't be able to have import and export of affordable food and goods, nor the bulk transportation of raw materials. Simply put, I believe that optimizing shipping kind of means optimizing trade. So what can we do? Well, a first idea could be to rely on other ways of transportation that have a more optimized supply chain. I'm actually thinking less maritime and more air travel here. The problem though, as we've seen earlier, air travel can be very expensive. It also offers lower volume capacity and has consequent pollution. We may have to wait for green energy, gigantic UFOs to help us out on that one. Another idea could be to reduce the need for international shipping. I'm letting you picture this though. No more iPhones, no more laptops, almost nothing to wear, less variety in the food we're eating, until we figure out a way to grow and manufacture all of those things locally, worldwide. From the discussions we're having with the crew, the vessel visits we're doing, and just common sense, well, we're seeing a need for a real solution. A solution that will not only solve the urge of the crew to get their parts on time, so they can, you know, resume their route and deliver the multi-million dollars worth of merchandise they're carrying, but also a global solution to manage this waste generated by such an inefficient supply chain. So what would such a solution look like? Back to the example of the crank phone, what if back then during that visit, we actually had a manufacturing solution with us so that we could manufacture that one part that the crew needed whenever and wherever they needed it? So for the past nine years, I have been lucky enough to work with a technology that enables just that, additive manufacturing. You may have heard as 3D printing or rapid prototyping as well, it's all the same thing. Now, desktop 3D printers are called so because they can literally fit on the edge of your desk. They're also as light as a three-year-old, or a pit bulldog if you're more into dogs and kids. I'm actually five months pregnant on that picture that we took a few weeks ago. It was totally okay and safe to carry that printer. My mom disagreed, but it's, it was okay. <laughs> We're using biodegradable materials to manufacture strong and durable parts that are actually comparable in all point with what traditional suppliers are providing those vessels. Operating such machine isn't rocket science either. Almost anyone could be trained within a few hands-on hours. It's also far less dangerous to use than a chainsaw. Actually, believe me on this one, I wouldn't put it on my back otherwise. Additive manufacturing is probably one of the most eco-friendly manufacturing process out there as well. See, it's actually called additive manufacturing because we're adding material as we're building a part rather than subtracting it. Most traditional manufacturing process would go the other way around. You'd start from a block of material and scrap that material off until you'd get to the desired design part. And that process generates a lot of waste that cannot always be reused. So in addition to be a more material conscious process by itself, because it doesn't require a PhD to be operated and the machines themselves can be travel size, I personally believe that additive manufacturing can be the perfect solution for a distributed supply chain. Now, pushing this a little bit further along, imagine a company box that has everything it needs to manufacture parts wherever that company box is located. It has 3D printers, of course, 3D scanners, computers, 
and even its own power source. What if we could deploy this kind of structure remotely, worldwide, wherever emergency parts are required within a quick turnaround time? I'm thinking ports, of course, based on my example of the crank phone, but also military bases, hospitals, earthquake, and other natural catastrophes risk areas. What if we always had a backup manufacturing solution to manufacture that one part that we might need whenever and wherever we might need it? Would that solve the timing, pricing, and waste issues I've been talking about earlier? So it won't change anything to the rumors about tuberculosis or cholera on the vessel, of course not. But it might help you get your Barbie doll and your T-shirts a little bit faster and cheaper. Most importantly, though, it might help emerging countries access to their food and good supplies cheaper and faster as well. And for them, it would really make a difference because maritime shipping accounts for over 90% of how they get their supplies. So what I'm really saying here is that there is an alternative solution to full equipment replacement. And it can even have a positive impact both on the environment and global trade. And if we can make this a reality in shipping, what is the limit? Thank you. <laughs>